no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all our righteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We just deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, forgive us, and lead us, so that we may be right in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you. For his sake forgives you all your sins, as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority. I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue now reading responsibly our intuit printed on our bullet pincer. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his saints. But let them not hear the act of God. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him. That the glory may dwell in our land. Yes, the Lord will give what is good. And our land will heal its increase. Righteousness will go before him. And make his footsteps away. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord. And grant us your salvation.
comes from Isaiah chapter 61, beginning at the first verse. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrong. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make them an everlasting, I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their offspring shall be known among the nations, and their descendants in the midst of the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them, that they are an offspring the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all the nations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. Our epistle lesson comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, beginning in the 16th verse. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, but test everything, hold fast what is good, abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Who sent us? 
What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, then why are you baptizing if you are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but among you stands one you do not know, even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany and across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Isaiah has 
such beautiful words for us this morning, it would be a shame for us not to consider them. Today is Gaudete Sunday, the third Sunday in Advent. Gaudete it comes from the Latin, which means for us to rejoice. That's why the pink or rose-colored or salmon candle, whichever color you choose to call it, is lit this day. We are reminded to rejoice, and there's good reason for us to do so. Consider what the prophet Isaiah has prophesied. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. Well, it makes sense that it would be good news for those who are financially strapped, that the Lord is going to bless them rich richly. But that's not what Isaiah is talking about. He doesn't care what the number is in your bank account. He doesn't care how much the check is you receive every month or every two weeks or however often it's written. He doesn't care about physical, financial, earthly treasures. In fact, if we were to look at ourselves honestly, we too are part of those poor which the Lord has blessed and who need the Lord's assurance because we have nothing to present before our righteous and Mighty God, we have nothing that we can offer to him that would indeed make him happy or even less uh, condemning of our sin. Remember what's written in God's word. Our works are but dirty rags outside of faith. We have nothing. We come forward with our hands extended. Nothing in them looking for the Lord to give. So we need to rightly see ourselves as indeed poor before the Lord, because compared to his riches, his might, his holiness, we dare not even stand in his holy righteous presence in our sin. Also, the prophet is sent to bind up the brokenhearted. Of course, there too. We may not be mourning something in particular going on in our lives, but we should look at our sin and repent. Look at our sin and be crushed by the fact that we have slighted our God so mightily, so unrighteously, so frequently. I'm still reminded of a television, a televangelist who would comment frequently that that person had not sinned at all in the last few weeks. Unbelievable that someone claiming to be a prophet of God would deny the fact that John himself wrote in his epistle, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. We're liars if we don't recognize our own guilt and have our hearts broken? Most certainly they should be. The prophet's also said to proclaim liberty to the captives. This one is hilarious. If we remember outside the temple, when the Jews asked, uh, when Jesus said, if you uh, follow me, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free, and what do they respond? We're children of Abraham. We've never been slaves to anyone. Anyone reading the history in the Old Testament knows they were slaves more often than they weren't. And when we consider the fact that anyone who sins is a slave to sin, we see ourselves bound and captive to those inclinations of thought or indeed in our own flesh. Again, sin has driven a wedge between God and man so wide that man cannot hope on his own to get across that chasm. It's like trying to jump across the Grand Canyon with your own two legs. It's not going to end well for you. You will splat. Don't pass go, don't collect $200. It's bad. And so the prophet needs to speak. The opening of the presence to those who are bound. Again, bound by our sin. 
found in our guilt. And to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God. Now, considering those verses that came before, we should most certainly be afraid of the Lord's vengeance, shouldn't we? If we saw ourselves aright and saw our debt owed to God and knew just how guilty we are, of course we should fear. God is a righteous God. God is a holy God. He's a jealous God. And yet, he sends his prophet to preach all of these things so that in these things we can see them fulfilled in Jesus Christ our Lord. I'll point it out again. This was my Christmas gift one year. I remember at Zion and Garrett, up on the pulpit, they had a nice little uh, three by five index card. They still make those, right? In this brave new world with technology and all that fun stuff. They had a yellowing and fading uh, three by five index card that says this very verse from John chapter 12, verse 21. Sir, we wish to see Jesus. This is a Christmas gift. I got four of them because I had three pulpits that I needed them for in Calhoun County. But they were a reminder to me and a reminder now to us that we see in this condemnation by the prophet this guilt being placed not on our own shoulders, but on the shoulders of him who was sent to rescue us. The shoulders of him whose birth we anxiously await placed upon the shoulders of him who would bear that heavy load that we ourselves could not, who would build that bridge across that chasm, who alone would be responsible for making right that which we've wronged so horribly, the one who would redeem us from our sin and make us God's own children. This is the beauty of Advent, because we get to see through the preaching of John the Baptist, through the preaching of Isaiah the prophet, through the whole of Holy Scriptures, what the remedy to our blood debt is. How exactly it is that reconciliation between God and man has been made. And so it is. Because Christ himself, born of the Virgin, born into the flesh, Born for you, our Emmanuel, God with us, has seen you in your lowly estate and had mercy upon you. He's chosen you to be his own. He saw through his pain, through his agony, what it was he was winning for your sake and endured the pains of the cross rather than see you perish. How do you like that? There's Jesus right before you, right in your face to say, you, a sinner, are forgiven in Christ our Lord. You who are a slave to sin have been made a son by him who's called you to be his own. You whose heart has been broken by realizing your own sinful ways has been made whole again by the redemption that he's won for your sake. You who were poor have now been made co-heirs of the eternal inheritance, the riches that God alone can give, greater than any gold or silver or any precious metal or money, greater than anything in all of creation. Here is your blessing, your inheritance that's given to you by God because you're in Him. That's why St. Paul can write those words that we read, uh, Jonah read in today's epistle lesson. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. You who were once lost are now found. The good shepherd has found you the lost sheep and has laid you upon his shoulders and carried you back to the herd, back to the flock. Yes. And for that, you can rejoice. Now, day 
Rejoice. Rejoice. Because the blessing is yours in him. Because the rest of it doesn't matter now. Just that Christ has washed you clean in the blood of salvation, the blood of the Lamb. Just that Christ has thrown himself in between you and the wolf that seeks to devour you. That's what matters. That's how we should approach Christmas. How we should continue in Advent. How we should continue throughout all our days. Because St. Paul has this nasty habit of reminding us over and over again to rejoice. Not to be sour pusses, not to walk around with frowns on our face all the time. Not to be grumpy and miserable and backbite and all that sort of fun stuff. But instead, to rejoice in the Lord always. Do you know the context, and Joan and I were talking about this before we came in. The context of Thessalonica and what was going on in the church when St. Paul wrote these words. St. Paul had to leave early from his time with them. And so he saw this church of people who were pagan converts. They were brought to faith by the very thing that St. John writes, Sir, we want to see Jesus. He showed them Jesus, and they believed, and they trusted. But the problem was they faced persecution. Not unlike what John faced. John, who was faithful, was thrown in prison. These uh, Thessalonian converts were indeed persecuted for what they in, were brought to believe, what they were taught. And what happened? They remained strong and faithful, even in the face of the threats of death, even in the face of the loss of livelihood, even in the face of whatever the devil could throw their way. St. Paul is writing this to them, encouraging them, because they didn't fall away, because they didn't go back to their old ways, their old sins, their old beliefs that weren't going to save them. And it gave him, and it gave them, and it gave, gives us reasons to be happy, to rejoice, to be glad. Because the Lord endures. His holy word endures forever. His promise is faithful and true. His gifts remain ours. Even this day we'll get to celebrate around his true body and blood for us. And it's reason for us to rejoice. You who were poor, receive the riches of God. You who were a slave, hear the freedom of forgiveness. You who were in prison, see your liberty in him who has set you free. Don't fear. Don't disbelieve. Don't be trapped by the lures of him who would want you to fall away. Instead, be faithful unto him as he is faithful unto you. See, taste and see that the Lord is good and what he's done for your sake. See the blessing that he continues to bring to you. His life, his forgiveness, and a hope that will not disappoint. John knew it. John saw it. John even had his moments. Consider the disciples that were saying, are you the guy or is there another? He had his moments. But even Jesus then affirmed to him, yes, in Christ the blind see, the deaf hear, the mute speak, the lame walk. That's us. We have our being in him. And in him we also have our redemption. Amen? Amen. Please rise. And now the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, now and forevermore. Amen. We continue now uh, confessing our common and saving faith with the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, 
one substance with the Father. By whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and Giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified. Who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for remission of sins, and I hope for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Keep your saints from every folly that would turn them from your word, words of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You sent John to proclaim the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Richly and daily forgive our sins and the sins of all believers. Like Matthew, our sin president, Daniel, our district president, David, our circuit visitor, Jason, our pastor, and all pastors in Christ. Gather and, serve and preserve your holy Christian church by your voice, and send us faithful preachers who will not deny but confess your truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Father, but be the source of strength and comfort in every home. Bless the children of our families that every darkness will be lightened by your Son's gracious visitation. Sanctify them completely, that their whole spirit, soul, and body may be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give wisdom and success to our nation and its leaders. Behold, on, behold in mercy all who are in authority over us and those newly elected. Preserve our land and its citizens in peace and harmony, and protect all who serve in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our thanks in every circumstance for your kindness in Christ Jesus, and the certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life of him. We pray especially for those whom we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us faith to believe the New Testament in your blood, to seek your holy supper for the forgiveness of our sins, and to, be, to, to confess your truth with honest hearts in communion with one another at this altar today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
right and salutary, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared, proclaiming him the promised Messiah, the very Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and calling sinners to repentance, that they might escape from the wrath to be revealed when he comes again in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we long to magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing.
to uh, make us long for those days when there's both feet on the ground. <laughs> no, no, I didn't think so either. Um, a few announcements. Please note that next Sunday, 9.30, is our Children's Christmas program here. We'll still live stream it for those who uh, can't make it, and we'll have it up online for those who maybe need to watch it later, because uh, I know we've got some who watch later in the day because they go to their own church in the morning and then watch us in the afternoon, which is always nice to see that sort of uh, interest in what we do here. Um, other announcements, Tuesday and Wednesday are my weekend this week, so if you're looking for me, I won't be here at the building Tuesday and Wednesday. But uh, otherwise, please note that we do have our third midweek Advent service. It's online only. So uh, it's already posted and ready to go. If you want to find it on Facebook and or YouTube, uh, it's in both places with the bulletin there. Uh, I will send out the link to the bulletin for next Sunday, probably Thursday or Friday, like I've done the past few weeks, and it'll be posted on our Facebook page also. This brave new world we have with this technology that we can do this, it's nice. It just adds a few more steps for us. So uh, please thank you for your patience as we, uh, as we work out the, the bugs we have with uh, live streaming. What other announcements do we have? We are having in-person New Year's Eve and New Year's Day services. They will be live streamed as well for those who can't be here. Uh, so uh, prayerfully consider. We will do candlelight as well for Christmas Eve. That's no problem. We'll make sure that happens too. I want us to keep as normal as we can in this day and age. Uh, I think it's nice that we can do things like, I don't know, in-person services. Uh, it helps us remember the good old days when there were more people here to do that because there wasn't this plague that was spreading across the earth and that sort of stuff. That's about it. Uh, positive notes. Anything in particular we need to announce? Tell me something good. Somebody, anybody. There's a song, isn't there? Yeah. Who sang that? Was that Parliament? I like George Clinton. You wouldn't know it to see me. Anything else? Amelia, something good. <laughs> Tomorrow's Monday. We start a whole new week. Oh, I gotta stop while we're behind. Uh, if there's nothing else, then have a great week, and we'll see you all again soon.